This is um, scapula. The scapula, uh, in order to understand scapula, we will have to follow the same uh, points that we considered uh, during our lecture of clavicle. So scapula, it falls into the category of irregular flat bones when it comes to classification of bones according to their shape and size. In uh, uh, gross anatomy, a student must know the anatomical position, side determination, bony features, also called gross features, also called bony landmarks, then attachments, which include various ligaments and muscles. Then we have ossification of the scapula. And in the last, we have clavicles. In order to understand the anatomical position and to determine the site of scapula since it's a paired bone, it is present on both sides of the body, that is right and left, we uh, must know the bony features first. So starting with the bony features. The bony features of scapula include two surfaces, costal surface and dorsal surface. It has three borders, a superior, medial, also called vertebral border, and lateral border. Three processes, which include spine, spine leading to acromion, and coracoid process. And then in the last, we have at least three angles that include a superior angle, inferior angle, and a lateral angle. Now we will see the different bony landmarks present on the surfaces, borders, um, processes, and angles. The surfaces are of great significance if a student wants to determine the anatomical position, correct anatomical position, and to determine the side of the scapula. So this is the costal surface. It is called costal surface because it faces the thoracic cage. If you look at the side view, you will come to realize that the costal surface which is also called the anterior or ventral surface, is slightly concave in the middle as compared to the convex outer or dorsal surface. Secondly, it bears at least three longitudinal ridges. Such landmarks are absent on the dorsal surface of the scapula. Then in the center, there is a shallow depression, which is called the subscapular fossa because it provides attachment to the muscle of the same name. Moving on to the bony features of the dorsal surface or the posterior surface of scapula. The posterior surface of the scapula bears a very important landmark that is called the spine of scapula. This spine of the scapula divides the convex posterior surface of scapula into two fossae. The fossa superior to, that lies superior to spine is known as supraspinatus fossa, and it provides attachment to the muscle of the same name. And the depression of the fossa below the spine of scapula is known as infraspinatus fossa, and it also provides attachment to the muscle of same name. Taking a look at the borders of scapula, it has three borders, a superior border, which is thinnest of all the borders. If you look in the side view and compare the superior border with the medial border, you will come to realize that it is thinner than the medial border. And when you compare the superior border, this again here is the superior border with the lateral border, again, you will realize that it is thinner than the lateral border too. It extends uh, medially from the superior angle. It extends medially from the superior angle up till the root or the base of the coracoid process where it exhibits a U-shaped depression, which is known as suprascapular notch. This U-shaped depression uh, is converted into a tunnel when 
suprascapular ligament covers it superiorly. Medial border is also called vertebral border because it runs adjacent to the vertebral column. It is thicker than the superior border, but thinner than the lateral border. Secondly, it extends from superior angle above till inferior angle below. This is here, this here is the inferior angle. Lateral border is thickest among all the three borders. It extends from below the glenoid cavity downwards till the inferior angle of scapula. On the costal surface, this border exhibits a very thick ridge. Here you can see thick ridge. So this here is the thick ridge between these two black lines that I drew on it in order to highlight the thick ridge. It is present on the costal side of the lateral border. And it, this ridge has clinical significance because it provides a liver. It acts as a liver for the actions and movement performed by the serratus anterior muscle which shall uh, pass in front of the costal surface of scapula in order to get attached along the costal aspect of the medial border of scapula from superior angle till inferior angle. Moving on to the processes of scapula. The processes of scapula are very important when it comes to exam uh, point of view. In examination, a student is commonly asked about the attachments which are present on uh, these different processes um, of the scapula as well as the joints formed by them. So starting with the spinous process of the scapula, the spine of the scapula is a uh, raised uh, thick ridge uh, present and located on the dorsal surface of the scapula. Um, it starts or extends from the root, uh, which is attached along the medial border of the scapula. This triangular area that has been highlighted uh, is, the, uh, is considered to be the root of the spine. So you know, the spine extends from its root, which is uh, continuous with the medial border of the um, scapula and runs forward where it becomes continuous with the acromion process of the scapula. The spine has an upper border. The spine has an upper border and a lower border. And two surfaces, an upper surface and below here, we have the lower surface or the inferior surface. Acromion process, however, uh, posteriorly is continuous with the spine of scapula. And the spine of scapula, and here, if you look in this view, you will see a small facet, which is uh, highlighted in light blue area. This is a facet, and it shows uh, a place where uh, the acromion process will articulate with the clavicle to form the acromioclavicular joint. Acromion similarly has two surfaces and two borders because it's a flat process. It's a flat process from above downwards. It is flattened. So hence it has two surfaces and two sharp borders and a tip. So here it has a medial border and here it has a lateral border and two surfaces. This one is the superior surface and below this one is the inferior surface. Moving on to the coracoid process. Coracoid process is a very important process because it provides attachment to very important and powerful ligaments in the body. 
uh, it uh, resembles the beak of a bird and it has again two surfaces, a superior and inferior surface. This is the tip of the acromion. And here it has an anterior border and a posterior border. This is the this area is the base of the coracoid process. Angles of the um, scapula are the basically three extensions of the scapula. Here we can see the superior angle, which basically lies between the medial border and superior border. And below is the inferior angle where the medial border meets with the lateral border. And the lateral angle is represented by the presence of the glenoid cavity. This is the glenoid uh, cavity, which is going to participate in articulation with the head of humerus to form the shoulder joint. Above the uh, glenoid cavity, there is a small elevation known as supraglenoid tubercle. And below the glenoid cavity, here is a small elevation called infraglenoid tubercle. So uh, how will you um, hold the bone in the anatomical position and what bony landmarks can help you identify the side of the scapula? First of all, if you're holding the bone, you will hold the bone in such a way that if you're sitting in front of the examiner, the costal surface will face the examiner, right? And secondly, the glenoid uh, cavity shell face lateral. And also you can take into consideration the medial border. And this is the lateral border. So naturally when the glenoid cavity will face or will be directed laterally. So the lateral border will also be present laterally and the middle border will automatically come to lie in the medial position. And superior angle with suprascapular notch will also help you hold the bone in the anatomical position so that you won't hold it in an upside down manner. So this bone, if a student is holding this bone, this bone belongs to the right side, to your right side. Moving on to the attachments on the scapula. So posterior aspect um, shows attachment of the supraspinatus muscle on the supraspinatus fossa and in the infraspinatus fossa is attached the infraspinatus muscle. Along the medial border, from superior angle up till the root of spine on the dorsal aspect gets attached the levator scapulae. Opposite the root of spine, rhomboidus minor, and more than two thirds of the medial border on the dorsal aspect is covered by the rhomboidus major. Inferior angle is covered by the latissimus dorsi. Moving on to the lateral border, starting from below the glenoid cavity on the infraglenoid tubercle is attached long head of tricep brachii. Uh, more than two thirds on the dorsal aspect of the lateral border gets attached the TDS minor and less than one third on the dorsal aspect of the lateral border gets attached the TDS major muscle. Root of spine on the upper border shows attachment of trapezius muscle in blue, which you can see extending uh, along the upper border of the spinous scapula, then uh, lateral border of the acromion and uh, reflecting to be attached on the posterior border of the lateral one third of clavicle. This is deltoid, which is attached over the lower border of the spinal scapula, then uh, the lateral border uh, and reflects on the anterior border of the lateral one third of the clavicle uh, to get attached there. This is the anterior view of the scapula showing attachment of the subscapularis muscle in the subscapular fossa and serratus anterior gets attached on the costal aspect of the medial border from superior angle till inferior angle in the form of eight digitations. 
Pectoralis minor gets attached on the superior surface and along the anterior border of the coracoid process. The tip of coracoid provides attachment to two very important muscles, namely coracobrachialis and short head of bicep brachii. And long head of bicep brachii gets attached on the supraglenoid tubercle of scapula. Then there are ligaments that get attached on scapula. These are very important ligaments from examination point of view. Here we can see the suprascapular ligament um, covering uh, and converting the suprascapular notch into a tunnel. Here uh, is another body's very important ligament called coracoacromial ligament, which extends uh, between the two bony processes of the scapula, namely the acromion above and coracoid below. Then we have coracohumeral ligament, which extends between the humerus apparent and the glenoid cavity uh, and the base of the uh, coracoid process passing above the glenoid cavity. Then we have coracoglenoid ligament, which extends uh, from the inferior aspect of the coracoid and upper aspect of the glenoid cavity. Uh, near the, uh, the superior surface of the coracoid process, near the uh, posterior aspect uh, along the base of the coracoid process, uh, this site on the coracoid process provides attachment to conoid and trapezoid part of coracoclavicular ligaments. This slide here shows the ossification of scapula, which ossifies with the help of two primary centers and seven or more secondary centers. The primary ossification centers, they usually appear in the body and coracoid process. And secondary centers, they again also appear one for the body, two for the coracoid process, two for the acromion, one for the vertebral, and one for the inferior ankle. Here we have the clinical, which is known as a very famous clinical related with the scapula and serratus anterior muscle which is called winging of scapula. Winging of scapula results um, as a consequence to stab injuries or bullet injuries that occur and involve the lateral side of the chest wall. Here on the anterolateral aspect, upper anterolateral aspect of the chest wall is running a nerve known as long thoracic nerve. If this nerve gets damaged, the muscle on the affected side will be paralyzed and the muscle uh, involved would be serratus anterior muscle. The patient will present uh, with the um, prominent overhanging or backward hanging and prominent medial border of the scapula. So this is patient's right side and this is patient's left side. So you can see that uh, the patient is um, told to stand facing the wall with both hands outstretched and lying against the wall. And the doctor is examining the back of the patient. And in case of winging of scapula, the scapula on the affected side will become prominent, particularly its medial border and inferior angle. So this here uh, is the winging of scapula on the right side of the patient. 